Tonight's program continues our series about Tobago and deals with several development projects. At Crown Point, I spoke to Tilak Narayan Singh, Technical Officer Works, about the diversion of the Milford Main Road to Crown Point Airport. The diversion of the Milford Main Road is necessary to open up the area around Storby for development as a beach resort. At the moment, the Milford Road runs very near the sea and therefore the complex that is planned, which will include hotels and parking area, will be on the opposite side of the existing Milford Road. In this case, pedestrians will have to cross fast-moving traffic on the Milford Road. The diversion is therefore necessary to keep traffic away from this area. He went on to give us further details about the construction of this road. There is one aspect of this job which I consider very important and that is to date no gravel has been imported from the riverbeds in Tobago as is normally done. Coral which is available on the site as high as one foot below the surface is excavated by bulldozers and used as base for the roadway. This reduces cost considerably. What is the cost of this road? The total estimated cost is $150,000. This includes construction and land acquisition. And what would be the length of this diversion? The total length of the diversion is three quarters of a mile. How many people are employed here? This project is being done by direct labor and excluding supervisory staff, there are 35 persons employed here. Efforts have been made to make this job labor intensive by excluding some items of normal machinery use. When we complete this diversion early next year, the main road in the Storby area will be closed to through traffic. In addition to the hotel development now in progress, Government is constructing public beach facilities that would include a bar, a snacket, changing rooms and car park for the public's use. The cost of this facility is approximately $100 and completion date will coincide with completion of the Milford Road diversion. At Charlotteville, he went on to see. In keeping with government's policy to provide beach facilities throughout Trinidad and Tobago, the Speyside Complex has been constructed by the Works Division, Ministry for Tobago Affairs, at a cost of some $96,000. It is expected that these facilities will soon become operational. Another such facility and almost a twin to the Speyside facility is the Charlottesville complex. The complex has changing rooms, bathrooms, lockers, snacket facilities, as well as accommodation for lifeguards and first aid personnel. At Goldsboro, the crushing plant was in full operation. In the operations of this plant, raw material is brought from the riverbed and stockpiled. Closer examination of the material obtained from the riverbed would reveal that there are stones of different sizes and also clay material. It's taken to the hopper and dumped into the plant itself. There is a conveyor belt system that transports this raw material.
throughout the entire plant. It's a completely mechanical arrangement. No physical work is necessary from any workmen except for the starting of pumps or so. In the first plant, what we see is a crushing unit and a screening unit plus a washing unit. It's threefold. Uh, in the first section, we have the largest size aggregate being taken out. This size aggregate is an inch and a half and it's most in demand at the present time. But the aggregate that we obtain, the inch and a half aggregate, is a much cleaner aggregate. It's more uniformly graded than the aggregate that is obtained in the raw form. The surplus material from the first section of the plant is transferred to the second section by a conveyor belt system. In this second section, there is just a screening and a washing operation. There is no crushing operation. And in this section, we obtain a wash sand. Further surplus material from the second section of the plant is transferred by a conveyor belt system to the third section. In this section, a further screening, washing and crushing operation takes place. We obtain here two different sizes of aggregates, a 3 quarter inch size and a 3 eight inch size. So what are the end products of this plant? Here we have a one and a half inch size aggregate here an intermediate size and here it's a sharp sand. What you can observe about this sand is that it is clean and also very uniformly graded. This is the whole idea of the plant to have uniform gradation. A plant of this nature uses a considerable amount of water. Where do you obtain your supplies from? We obtain our supply of water from the Goldsboro River which is right in the vicinity of the plant. The water is pumped by means of a lifter centrifugal 25 horsepower pump through a 4 inch line to the plant itself. At Manawa Bay, I visited the Access Road project where I spoke to James Gruden about the works in progress. There are two aspects of this project. One, the completion of the construction of this road and the other, the paving of a drain, other drain, which is causing a lot of erosion during the rainy season. What is the cost of this project? The estimated cost is $7,000. How many people do you have employed here? There are some eight persons employed as a, at a shift basis. What is the next stage? The next stage will be to pave the road and complete the drain. When this stage is completed, it will, be, it will provide an additional bathing place for our people and be of assistance to our fishermen. Gertrude Williams is a villager and she speaks about the problems of this drain. Sometimes during the rainy season, a lot of flooding is caused by the old drain and we can't get to go home at night. I am happy that a road and drain will now control the water so that we could get to go home. At Roxborough, we took the opportunity to look at other projects. Nearing completion at Roxborough is a trade center, which is an annex to the community center. It is being built at the cost of $30,000, and when completed and equipped, it will cater for woodworking, plumbing, masonry, and electrical craftsmanship. Some eight persons are employed on a five-day shift. In Roxborough, the division is putting the finishing touches to um, a new type public convenience. The structure built at, at a cost of some $16,000 will contain, in addition to the normal type amenities, shower baths. We have some um, some 16 persons employed on the project now, you know, and this is on, this has been the average of employment throughout the, the, the life of the project. At Castries Street, I spoke to the engineer in charge, 
about erosion in that area? Erosion is a big problem in Tobago and the wall that you see is being constructed to prevent further erosion of the land at the end of the street. What will be the cost of this wall when completed? The first section of the wall, the high section adjacent to the road, is estimated at 22,000. The lower section completing the wall is estimated at 18,000, making a total of $40,000. Some years ago, the land on the roadway fell into the sea, making it very difficult to gain access to houses in the area and to the beach. When this retaining wall is completed, it will be some 138 feet long. Not only will it help to prevent erosion, but it will provide support for the roadway to be constructed. How many people are employed here? We have 17 people employed here and the estimated completion date is at the end of August. This seawall under construction at Queen's Bay Betsy's Hope is to prevent further erosion of the sea. The sea in this area has been eroding rather rapidly and eating away the land. Particularly in the last two years this has accelerated. So we're spending $50,000 on a seawall here. The seawall is 11 feet from top to bottom. Five of these feet are entirely below beach level. Foundation width is five and a half feet and it's three foot wide at the top. Throughout the project our average employment has been about 20 people. At times we have employed more than this on the project. Mm -hmm.